Welcome into the Mecca podcast once again. I am here with uh, Ian Jet Central. Wanted to again thank Dalton. The show came out great with uh, with Dalton with UCF uh, Jaguar. He was awesome on the show. And yeah, JC, man, what's going on? How have your last couple of days been? We are closer to the weekend now. Ah, uh, it's not too bad, Spence. Not too bad. You know, I actually got the uh, Thursday night game uh, on TV right here. It's on mute, so uh, gonna have that rolling in the background, and uh, can't wait to dive into these topics. So right now, the time is about nine thirty Eastern time, and I'm gonna guess the score of the game because I literally have not seen the score at all. So I'm gonna guess Seattle ten, Arizona three. Nope. It's right now. It's tied up seven seven. It's 7-7? Seven, seven? Arizona just scored, actually, yeah. A touchdown? Oh, wait, to, yeah. to take the lead 14-7? No, no, they just scored to get uh, that to seven answer, points. To answer Fitzgerald? Um, no, I, th- I believe it was to, to Gresham. I was just in the bathroom, so I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't see who caught the ball. Mm-hmm. If Seattle loses this game, I mean, you know, Arizona winning at San Francisco last week, like their defense actually surprisingly like has talent. And I, I don't love the scheme that like I think it's Godwin their DC employs, but you know, they're sneak you know, it's a sneaky division game. And I mean, of course you look at Drew Stanton and you know his his limitations, but you know, I think it's gonna be a dog fight though. Yeah, I think so. It's it's totally weird when when you look at the Cardinals roster on defense, at least you know with Patrick Peterson, Tyron Matthew. You know they still got Dansby. He's playing. I mean, you know when they said his name, I was just like, what the heck? Like he's still playing. Like yeah, I thought he was on the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought he was at the uh, the tail end of his career, like back when he was with the. Uh, I think it was the Browns like a few years ago. So I was mm-hmm. shocked to see you know to see him out there. Chandler Jones is another one. So. They got oh, guys. Yeah. yeah, from the Patriots. You're right. I mean, they have guys yeah. they drafted Hassan Reddick. They have this guy Golson, who's a linebacker too. Frosty oh, Marcus Rucker. Goss. Yeah. Frosty yeah, yeah. Rucker. Yeah. Their D line, I think it's a three four. So their defensive line though isn't that good. And unfortunately, the Kemdichi brother, I don't think he's he's that that great either. You know, he was supposed to be huge. You know, what's his name? Um Indomican Kendichi, you know. <laughs> Rob, Rob can teach me, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would actually, you know, if I'm the Jets, I would offer a trade for him. I mean, a big, uh, really high ceiling guy. I think he, we could get him for cheap. Maybe a, a possible replacement for uh, Wilkerson has mm-hmm. experience in the 3-4. High ceiling guy. Remember before the draft? Yeah. He, you know, he was. it's funny. He was actually the number one prospect in high school when he was coming, like his senior year. Mm-hmm. And he had that incident in Atlanta. Remember, he fell out of like a, uh, a, a, a uh, yeah, an apartment complex. He was okay, but you know, it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see how he's kind of panned out. They they don't really have him impacting the game that much. But I like Chandler Jones, and I'm just surprised that this defense honestly gets burned a lot. They have Buffet, they have Bethel, they have so many names like from the Niners, like so many veterans. They just can't get the thing together, and it's just disappointing to see. Maybe it's too aggressive of defense. You know, Honey Badger's actually been beat this year a lot. Maybe the injuries that he's accumulated just haven't worked out for him. So this whole team it's a weird mix and it's just gonna nosedive you can tell it's gonna just fall apart really soon you know Arizona yeah it just sucks because they have a whole bunch of older players they don't really have an answer at quarterback right now uh the coach is somewhat on the hot seat I mean that whole thing is kind of a big question mark too so right yeah. now I don't think they have like an identity I mean just a whole bunch of veterans kind of playing together they're in win now mode, but you know, not really close to winning, and that that's a tough formula. Ian, before we get into our main topics here, I just thought of another thing I wanted to mention to you, and that's how impressive was Kirk Cousins' drive against Seattle. I mean, that's a game where a lot of I tuned in pretty much to the fourth quarter of that game. I know Seattle held them in check for a lot of the game, but what did you make of the final drive? What did you make of Kirk's performance on Sunday? I thought Kirk played great. You know, I think Kirk has a lot of doubters for sure. And it's, you know, the the whole Kirk Cousins situation is like weird because I feel like if Cousins was a first round pick, he would have already been on, signed to his, you know, to this big, huge deal. I feel like just since he was, uh, I think, a fourth round pick, you know, people still haven't bought into him. And it's weird because, you know, that the ex first round picks, it just seems like they get so many different chances, you know, like, oh, well, this guy was a first round pick. Whereas, you know, if a later round guy, it's always, there's always that doubt, you know, in the back of people's heads, 
where it's like, you know, oh, well, he was a fifth round pick or he was a seventh round pick for a reason. You know, let's, let's pump the brakes on, you know, on this guy before we pay him. So I think Kirk Cousins continues to prove the doubters wrong. I really like the Redskins team this season. I, I really think they're a, they're a good team. I, I just don't I just don't view them as a four and four team. You know, I guess if I do view them as a four and four team, they're easily the best, you know, 500 team right now. Uh, great game by Kirk. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at Washington, too, and they're they're a tough team to certainly figure out. Their schedule's difficult in the division. I think they're clearly the third best team, especially getting swept by the Eagles, losing definitively to Dallas. In fact, when you look at Washington, they haven't played the Giants yet, I don't believe. So I, I think that this Redskins team is actually 0-3 versus the NFC East, which is just a formula for disaster. You know, when you talk about tie-breaking scenarios and things of that nature, it's a weird roster, not a great ownership group, very dysfunctional organization that makes impulsive decisions and signings with Norman. Um, when I look at Washington, though, one of the biggest disappointments in the whole entire NFL is the regression of Terrell Pryor. And this is a guy that we were drafting in the third or fourth round, huge upside, Cleveland Brown success story, tons of confidence. And he has just, he has turned into a complete non-factor while the kid from TCU, Josh Doxson, it has been really, um, Josh Doxson. Yeah, he's emerged. He's emerged, but, but Terrell Pryor's completely dropped. And that's been crazy to see, Ian, Terrell Pryor. Right. That, oh my, it, that's such a weird situation, the whole Terrell Pryor, because you look at him, whenever he's with Hugh Jackson, he tends to be productive. But whenever he's not, you know, it, it just seems like his production tails off. Um, I still like Pryor. I, I do still view him as a stud wide receiver. He's not a top five guy or anything like that. But I do think he, he reminds me of like a young Brandon Marshall. That's like how I view his skill set. Um, you know, I, I honestly think that the Cleveland Browns should try to get him back at the end of the season. I mean, he's only he only signed a one year deal with Washington. I mean, if, if he hits the free agent market, just bring him back if you're Cleveland. They need some wide receiving help. And I think if Terrell Pryor comes back to the Cleveland Browns, I think, you know, I, I think not only does he already have familiarity with the uh, with the system and the team and the uh, the players and he has chemistry. But I, I think you could also get him on a cheaper deal because he'd be coming off, you know, a less productive season. Yeah, it's it's interesting to look at that angle. I mean, I don't know if I believe in, in prior like quite as much. You know, maybe the league is catching up with him. Maybe it's a scheme thing like you're talking about. It's funny when you look at Cleveland, they've had these one hit wonders. Like I just think you had the tight end position. You had the guy. I always get him confused with the Saints defensive lineman. Cam, it's Jordan Cameron that tight end who went to Miami and he kind of like, you never really heard about him again. Gary Barnage, Peyton Hillis, they all flashed for like a year and it would be interesting. Like Josh Gordon is coming back now for Cleveland and that would be set. That would be pretty dang cool to see like Kaiser, Gordon and Pryor all on one field. And you can't forget about uh, first round pick Corey Coleman. I mean, he's going to he's going to be coming back too. So that's potentially three big time wide receivers, or it, I should say, is. playmakers. And, and then they drafted this kid. I think way too high. Like everyone at the combine just loved this David uh, uh, Joku. You know, the tight end too. Oh, Joku, yeah. And Joku, he's like a second round guy. So like, he better pan out. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely uh, athletic as hell. I mean, he can make plays uh, down the middle of the field. <coughs> uh, extremely athletic. I think once he kind of comes into his own, I think that's when he'll really, you know, take off with the Browns. He better. Let's talk about Jacoby Brissett now. You know, you sent me an interesting message, you know, on our pre-production meeting about Jacoby Brissett, and I'm going to let you lay out your argument here. Um, about Jacoby Brissett and the Indiana Indianapolis Colts and the future there of that organization. Right. So I actually just posted a video about this uh, <clears throat> on my channel, just talking about, you know, my thoughts on the Colts, Andrew Luck, Brissett, where the franchise, I guess, should go, like what direction, you know, I, if I was running the Colts, what direction I would choose, you know, as far as who to move forward with at the quarterback position, should you trade down? Should you draft another quarterback? You know, because there's a lot of rumors right now swirling around Andrew Luck, 
you know, is he mad? Is Ursay mad? What's going on with his shoulder? He's on a big money deal and stuff like that. And I love Andrew Luck, right? He's like the absolute prototype for the quarterback. Basically checks the box in every single category other than two. I mean, two areas I think he can improve, which one is really easy, just sliding, throwing the ball away, not taking these massive hits, uh, just to stay healthy. I mean, ironically, he's hurt right now. Um, you know, making my case that he needs to get down and throw the ball away. Uh, And then number two is just the turnovers. But I think that's just him being, you know, still a younger quarterback trying to be play hero ball, you know, if you will, knowing that he's the best player on his team, he kind of has to force plays to get the Colts, you know, in prime position to score points. And, um, you know, those are really the only two areas that luck needs improvement on. Um, but, you know, looking at where the Colts are as a franchise, personnel-wise, you know, their coaching staff, uh, where they're going to be picking the draft and their record and whatnot, um, I, I think I've seen enough of Jacoby Brissett this season to move forward with him, deal Andrew Luck, and just see what you can get back from him just because of this. Because if you could get rid of Andrew Luck, right, and it pains me to say that because I'm the biggest Andrew Luck supporter, I'm just saying Jacoby Brissett right now could be the smarter option financially, you know, as far as money, because as soon as you get rid of Andrew Luck, you're going to have so much more money to spend in uh, the free agency pool to, to get talent on this Indianapolis Colts team, whether it be offense or defense, uh, both sides need talent. Um, not only are you going to be clearing some, some cap space, getting rid of luck, but you're also going to be getting rid of the headache. You know, that is, you know, what's going to happen with his shoulder, Who's going to be the quarterback? Because Brissett has played well. Um, is he ever going to be the same? You know, what's what's going on with him and Ursay? Are they are they still like pals? You know, or do they hate each other? Stuff like that. You know, I look at Jacoby Brissett. He's also younger. He's had less injuries. He's obviously way cheaper. And you know, overall, I think Brissett has done a fantastic job coming in to this season. Um, you know the. The Colts traded what? I think week two or week three, they traded for him. They gave away Philip Dorsett, Mm -hmm. uh, which has worked out in the Colts' favor. Um, So to look at a guy in Brissett coming in, I think, week two or week three, being basically forced to learn this playbook, learn it on the fly, start, be productive. I think, you know, I think Jacoby Brissett has handled himself pretty damn good right now. And I got to give credit to uh, the the offensive staff right now for the Colts and, and getting this guy ready to play. And um, right now, I just like what I see from uh, Jacoby Brissett. He reminds me of a smarter Geno Smith. It's, it's boy, that you just threw out a lot, a lot there. And I went into this conversation and I thought I would say to you, Ian, I honestly thought I would say to you that, that you're insane to go with Jacoby Brissett and deal Andrew Luck because, you know, I look at Luck, the guy can play anywhere. He hangs in the pocket. He's like a superstar talent. But you look at the injuries, right? And the coach is going to get fired. This is an awful, awful roster. Like Vontae Davis is getting old. You're running back Frank Gore. Got they actually ju- they actually just released him today, Vontae. Yeah, um, maybe the clear up cap space or something. I mean, you know, I know he's an interesting, funny personality, but I think he's a talented guy. I guess he's getting older. It's it's a very strange, strange kind of team. I actually loved their draft last year. I still love I love the safety out of um out of Ohio State Malik Hooker. I think that that guy's a, a center fielder that's going to scare people. Then they draft that kid, Basham, out of Ohio. There's another guy. They drafted a Wilson, maybe. Wilson or May, one of the Florida cornerbacks that I think is going to have a really good NFL career. So I look at what Chris Ballard is doing, their GM. I like what they're doing. They are just so far away. Their offensive line's total patchwork still. They keep missing on guys and Frank Gore and – Ah, it's strange because, right, you're going to have to pay Andrew Luck, so then you can't go out and your roster can't get really efficient. So, that, so that's, what you're, that's, that's a pretty decent argument is that if you pay Luck, your roster is still going to be terrible. And then you look at the Colts now, they're going to have the option of, dra- of drafting probably Rosen or Allen, right? And then the, those guys are going to be dirt cheap. Then Andrew Luck could be dealt. You could get back first-round pick galore. 
man, oh man, I, I just don't know what your trade value is. I know I'm going to let you talk, but what is Andrew Luck's trade value now? The dude is so injured now. Right. Totally hear you on that. But I guess to try to per- put it in at least some sort of perspective, Sam Bradford was dealt for a first round pick and a fourth round pick. So, <laughs> you know, Luck – Bradford so I mean you could probably get a nice haul back from him and that's like something I you know I forgot to kind of I guess emphasize before is that it's not like you're just cutting him or getting rid of him like if you deal luck not only do you have like a competent starter already on your team who's young who knows the system who's you know I would say excelled with having limited reps no chemistry learning on the fly basically his first time starting so you got the quarterback you got your haul that you know what you got back for Andrew Luck, whether it be picks or players, regardless, they're going to be opportunities for the Colts, and then they're still going to have a top five pick this year. So you can go ahead and you can go get Saquon Barkley or McGlinchney or Bradley Chubb, you know any of these guys that would be instant upgrades. Oh, you know over any pretty much position on the Indianapolis Colts. Just thinking right now of hypothetical trade offers now for Andrew Luck. I mean, so he's gone this year. Um, you know what's interesting? I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you why the Bradford trade was kind of made. Because Minnesota, they completely panicked in that instance. You know, they have this defense that's veterans, you know, Griffin. Um, I, their D-line, right? Let's, let's talk about their defensive line. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Johnson, they have um, Daniel Hunter, and then their linebackers are awesome, Anthony Barr. Like, they literally have a tremendous defense. And then, you know, they wanted to add, you know, Sam Bradford because they were desperate. Teddy Bridgewater, it might have been a career ender at that time. So Harry Ro- Howie Roseman flipped him last week before the season. That trade usually doesn't get done in – in April, May, June, or July. It, it might get done in late July, so I'd maybe hold on to Andrew Luck. I look at Jacoby Brissett. I think he's pretty good. He's competent, but he's not the guy I want to build around whatsoever. And I look at Brissett in a couple of ways. Maybe it's because he's a late-round NC State guy that I'm thinking that. But I look at Brissett. Yes, he has arm strength, but I don't think he's mobile enough to get it done. I don't think he processes – I don't think he goes from read to read quick enough. He's just a little <laughs> slow in the pocket um he's functional but not elite and if you're going to get rid of Andrew Luck I would definitely draft you know a quarterback of the future I would draft a very talented uber talented guy I'd look at you know Allen I'd look at um Josh Rosen I'd look at Mayfield Luke Falk I would look at those guys to compete with Jacoby Brissett and then I'd at least if you're going to deal Andrew Luck I'd maybe want a stud running back back, like a Dalvin Cook. Like, he'd fit in Minnesota perfectly. If you're going to trade him to Jacksonville, I'd look for a young, like a Dante Fowler, someone with a huge upside. You know, I would look for a player, a first and a third for Andrew Luck probably. That's what I would do. What what would be your trade? Because my trade would be a first rounder, a third rounder, and a defensive or young pro bowl caliber player that you can bring in okay what let me ask you this real quick what team do you think he's best fit with assuming he will be off the like for next season what team i think you look at the defense i got two options that immediately pop in my head i got (laughs) one jacksonville for me but that's a division (laughs) rival in the south i don't think so minnesota inside I just like the defense. So the one thing about Andrew Luck, you could throw him outside. Like he's going to, you know, you could throw Andrew Luck in Buffalo and his arm strength is, is, you know, I could totally, couldn't you see it? Andrew Luck, in fact, he doesn't play like a dome quarterback. He plays tough as nails. He hangs in the pocket till the last second. Heck, if I were Buffalo, I'd make a move for Andrew Luck. A lot of teams, I'd say Buffalo, Jags, and, and Vikings. What, are, what teams do you see? I'm thinking two, Denver, at Pittsburgh for next season. Denver. Denver. Oh. I, I, you know, and I think the, uh, I guess. Yeah, okay. Okay. I, guess, I like I, Denver too. I mean, yeah, Denver, that's like, I would say choice number one, just because, you know, they have Osweiler. He doesn't look like the guy. They have Simeon. They're not sold on him. They just drafted Paxton Lynch. 
you know, he seems to never be, you know, playing in the games, kind of the Denver's version of Christian Hackenberg, like no one knows where he is. Uh, they also got Chad Kelly, who I would like to see get a shot. But if Andrew Luck is like on the table, you got to pull the trigger on Luck. Uh, as far as what you, you know, your original question, which was um, what you could get back in, in return for him, I would say – I would like at least one first, maybe a third, and a player, like you were saying. So maybe as far as, you know, Pittsburgh, like or we'll, we'll do Denver because that's more of a realistic option, I think. Yeah, because I think, the one thing about Pitt, though, is that, you know, Big Ben is is going to retire. That defense is in no way, shape, and form like the capability of the Denver Broncos. Um, it's a possibility, honestly, if Ben retires, though. It's definitely a possibility. I, yeah, I think I think Ben will be gone, but um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at with Andrew Luck, and and honestly, you know, if I was in charge, I w- I think I would move forward for set. You know, I um I wanted to ask you, um, you said you're not sold on on Jacoby, which is like completely understandable because it's only been half a season. Yeah, but within that half season, you know, so far this year, what more would you like your quarterback to do? Like what what uh, what's something uh, that he should have done differently to make you more sold on him, Get, like understanding the circumstances. Like, so him being like Delta Indy, like, mid, you know, week two, having no chemistry. He's still a really young quarterback. He's not really started. I'm just curious on, you know, your thoughts on, you know, why you aren't more sold on him. Getting the ball out quicker, more consistent performances. Like in Seattle, he had a great half, and then he followed that up by not moving the chains. There's just winnable games out there that, that he should have commanded and won. The Tennessee game is a winnable game. Now, I know that the defense has fallen apart, but as a quarterback, you got to win the locker room, and it's just a win-loss thing. I'll be full disclosure. Um, there's only a certain amount of, of televisions and things that we have access to. And this cold season, I haven't been diving into Jacoby. Brissett. I mean, I've watched him in spots. I see the arm strength. I see the talent. You know, I do think that the guy has arm talent. I, I want to see more. I want to see him win some football games. I want to see him take over and be confident. I think he's okay. I just would never rate him on the caliber, though, when we talk about Jacoby and, like, Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck's a guy that, you know, he went into Denver and beat Peyton Manning. He, um, he led one of the great postseason comebacks ever versus Kansas City when Alex Smith threw four touchdowns. He beat Andy Reid and had an incredible comeback. Um, he's beaten the Bengals. So he has, like, three playoff wins under his belt and multiple division titles. And, and a guy that's very accomplished. So it's very, very hard to just deal him. And you look at – there are quarterbacks like Jacoby Brissett, like Nick Foles. Nick Foles had five to six games in Philly with Chip, and he's like a fourth-rounder with good size as well. You know what I mean? Like, I just got to see a little bit more, and it's not like the dude's winning ball games. Completely understandable. Totally see your point. I'm just saying – I would give the kid a chance. That's that's my argument, you know, with with not that much talent, with arguably a uh, like a, a below average coaching staff. Um, I, I I'm gonna roll the dice at Jacoby, and I, I like having this you know this disagreement because it's like Luck versus Brissett and stuff. And it's I like cool because it. I like it too. Yeah. If I was Indy, it's very difficult because it's not like they're ready to win. They're not a Denver at all. Like, I look at Denver, and, and it's perfect because you have Von Miller, you have Tlaib still there. Like, you have dudes that want to, like, win a championship, and then they're going to bounce in, like, a year. And Indy, it's like a rebuilding thing with Andrew Luck, and it's just – it's awkward as heck with with Ursay, like you were talking about. So, like, if you put yourself in Indy's shoes, like, I could totally see just the rebuild, them trading Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, by the way, I think almost – Oh, like I'd say maybe how what the what percentage of the league would take him? I mean, a large per, percentage of the league. A hundred percent. Even like any any team would take Andrew Luck. I mean, it, unless 20, it's like, unless like it's twenty nine years old, right? I think he, you know, twenty. Yeah, he's either twenty eight, twenty nine, somewhere in that range. I mean, he was what drafted in twenty twelve. So yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I love Luck. I'm not a Luck hater or anything like that. Like, ah, Andrew Luck is just so damn good. But I, I'm just looking at it from a financial standpoint, a, a just an overall logical standpoint. Because what happens if you throw Andrew Luck in and the Colts are still 
incapable of getting him an offensive line, incapable of getting him a run game, you know, and he still ha- – you just, he, you're basically just throwing him to the fire still. Yeah. I mean, and, of course, you can say that the same thing with Brissett. Only difference is, is Brissett is not costing you whatever, $30 million in guarantees. He's younger, and he hasn't had injury trouble. So that's just kind of my argument to it. That we both could be right, you know, like – if they keep luck, I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh, what the hell, you know, what, what, you know, what's going on with Indy? Why they do that? Because Andrew Luck is a great quarterback, but right now, I think that's what that's what my plan would be: go with Brissett, draft, um, you know, Saquon or maybe one of the top O linemen, and get a huge haul back for Andrew Luck, and kind of just start the rebuilding process with like two step, you know, a, uh, I guess just a head start. There's no wide receivers on that team. Like, Hilton is okay. You know, he's really good in spots. You have Gore, Donald Brown. That roster is just – it is like a three- to four-year, like, until they are uh, until they are competitive, and then you pigeonhole yourself. And, you know, your point's really valid. Like, the tough part about this is it's not like a Joe Flacco where, like, it's cut and dry – in my opinion, that the guy cannot carry a team. (laughs) And, like, looking back, I think the Ravens made a really – I think they made a pretty bad mistake. They got caught up in the moment, right? And what has Flacco done since the Super Bowl? Maybe, like, one playoff appearances and and just complete mediocrity. Look at even an all-star quarterback, Ian, like Drew Brees, that gets that kind of money. And then they can't build anything around him so then he's just collecting checks and they're going like seven and nine so I totally see your point and in fact in the modern era if I was a GM imagine this strategy of football every year you like trade like your hot commodity quarterback and just like start with a rookie and then your defense remains amazing that's how Seattle won a Super Bowl with with Russell Wilson is the cheap quarterback plan that's how the Eagles are balling out with Carson that's how Dak is balling with the Dallas Cowboys and they have the roster so talented um you know it's a really interesting point you make Yeah, definitely. I like having the disagreement, you know, we're cool with each other so we can have that. It's not like heated or anything like that, but uh, it might get heated for fun. I'm more, I'm more confused right now. It's, it's, it's a confusing prophecy because it's very worrisome if you keep Andrew Luck. So I'm kind of like seeing your point because it's very, it's like the roster is going to be terrible around Andrew Luck. Yeah, yeah. I just totally. think Luck is just. I just think Andrew Luck is just. It's. It, I just think the guy is incredible. I think that the guy is a magnificent player, though. He is incredible. I mean, you're totally spot on with that. But like, the thing is, is that it's like, I know if I if 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 I was working for the Colts and we, you know, made a decision and we're saying Brissett is going to be the backup quarterback for years to come. We're moving forward with Andrew Luck, and uh, it is what it is. I just wouldn't be able to sleep like the next night because it's like. I just feel like Andrew Luck is almost like walking on eggshells because he's, we don't know how he's going to perform when he comes back. Yeah. We're paying him a ton of money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, there's might be some tension with him and the owner or say, um, do you sell him while he's still high, get what you can while you already have a quarterback that can, you know, he's, he's shown that he can at least perform decently, you know, with the horrible roster that is the Colts. So here's the honest question for you. Okay. Go for it. First of all, I don't think Andrew Luck's stock, though, is incredibly high around the league because especially Pittsburgh, like teams are worried about his injuries. And this is a 28-year-old, but he's like a 34-year-old in terms of the injuries and things. His body's probably like 34, 35. If you get like four or five years out of Andrew Luck, like that would be – Uh, you know, a a blessing. It would be tremendous because of all the shoulder problems and because of all the injury problems. My question for you is when you look at this draft class, like is Jacoby your long-term answer and you'd be okay without drafting a quarterback or are you still drafting a top round guy and you're going to see if he can beat out Brissett? Uh, if I'm the Colts, I would I would roll the dice with Brissett, and I, I wouldn't necessarily say this is the guy for the next 10 years. All I'm saying is let's okay. trade luck while we can, get back in, like what we can in return for him. So have that nice little you know treasure chest. We know we already have the knowledge, and you know the optics show that Brissett can perform. It's not like Fitzpatrick or McCown or Jay Cutler or anything like that where it's like uh, we you know he could be 
god awful the next season and just be a distraction. You know, he's just going to be a young guy. He's going to be coming in working. Um, I mean, if if he's shown that he can perform at this level, not saying he's like a top five or top ten quarterback, but just a competent quarterback that you know can start, maybe win you some games down the stretch. He's not going to kill the team. He's not going to be like a huge negative because right. um, I think he's been the pretty much the you know one or two bright spots of the Colts offense. And then in regards to, you know, your question about picking like a Rosen, a Darnold, or, you know, an Allen or something like that, I I would, I would go with Barkley. I would give the Colts offense a huge, probably the best weapon in this draft class and arguably the best player. So I'm going Saquon. I think like if you're talking about Jacoby Brissett or, or even like Davis Webb, like to start a franchise, like I'm just, I'm just not ready to go there with Brissett whatsoever. And maybe it's the stigma of him being a third stringer, but I, I just don't think he's that fast on his feet. I don't think he can carry an offense whatsoever. I don't think he's a superstar generational talent. I think he's a fill in guy. So I think like we have our disagreements about like you're really high on Jacoby Brissett. I'm more lukewarm. I think that he's a guy that can fill in, you know, like you talk about Jay Cutler, like Jay Cutler, you know, he used to be a guy that can, can really be there for a franchise. I just haven't seen enough from Brissett. I would definitely draft, you know, a Josh Rosen there because then you have that competition immediately. That And then if Brissett holds him off, then you really see what you got. But you're putting all your eggs in the Brissett basket and – you know, I just don't know if I'd roll with that plan whatsoever. Right. Well, I think I think it's not so much pushing like all my chips in the middle of the table with Jacoby and just saying you're the guy for the next 10 years. I think that's almost what you'd be doing if you kept luck, because not only do you have to play him for the next few years, but you have to pay him, you know, whatever the 30 million dollars in guarantees and this and that. But yeah, as far as as far as the draft, you know, instead of bringing in and like a drafting another quarterback and just saying like, okay, here's the competition. I would just go best player available, maybe a Barkley and then try to bring in like a veteran quarterback that, you know, is, is on par with Brissett's level, like a Tyrod or maybe a yeah. Case Keenum or Nick Foles, you know, who knows? Um, I just you know, don't think Brissett's winning playoff games. I just don't think he's a Super Bowl guy. Like, in the NFL, you have to look who's a Super Bowl guy. They have one right now in Andrew Luck. He's a Super Bowl guy. And well, I just look at Brissett, and, like, he's struggling in some of his games. Sure, he's had his bright spots, but, like, he lets teams hang around. He's not killing people. You look at the Sean Watson, man. He went into Seattle. He killed them for four straight quarters. He was blowing up. You know, Brissett is nice here and there. He'll have some, some moments, but come on. Tom Savage was right there with Brissett. It's not like Brissett's just out here killing people. And he's been nice. He's he's a guy that's competent, but I'm definitely not like, you know. But but you're I think you're grading the quarterbacks like they're right here. I think you have to look at the Texans coaching staff much better than the Colts. I think the Texans yeah. overall personnel much better than the Colts. Yeah. I think – I think, you know, Jake, uh, Jacoby Brissett, I think from, I, 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 I just, I, I want to just cut the kids some slack. You know, I want to say, Hey, look, you've never been a starter before yeah. you got traded like in the regular season. That must be tough for a kid. You've had no chemistry. You were basically thrown into the starting role. Here's the playbook. You learn it, you know, yeah, right. and he's, you know, and I'm not expecting the guy to go in, you know, to beat Seattle and whatnot. I mean, with, yeah. with this roster around him. So that's kind of my, well, you my argument. It's really hard to insult Jacoby Brissett's efforts this year. You're absolutely right. He came in like, you know, second week of the year. He's done a very admirable, nice job. It's just I'm not wowed by the speed. I'm not wowed by the process, you know, by going from, from side to side with the reads and – yeah, I mean, the guy is pretty nice. I'm just not ready to uh, – it's just like it, – it's a, it's a very difficult decision, but it, there's a chance, Ian, right, that Jacoby Brissett just sinks in the mediocrity. Is, isn't that correct? Totally, isn't yeah, a chance? Oh, big chance, big chance. I big mean, chance, right? So don't you want to have the insurance of a Rosen coming in? Well, you do, but the, then again, you can make the argument that Rosen is no guarantee either. Mm-hmm. I would rather draft a top five – I'm totally sold on Rosen, by the way. I want the Jets to get him. Mm. But if I'm the Colts standpoint, I'm looking at Brissett saying to myself, hey, look, you know, 
from what he's done this season and whatnot. So how about, um, yeah. How about this one? How about Baker Mayfield and Brissett? You get Mayfield in the second round. Uh, I, you know, if I'm Indy, I would just bring in a veteran quarterback. I wouldn't waste a draft pick on another QB. You know, you already have a young <laughs> one with potential. Oh, Let, okay. Man. Okay. 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 Let me ask you this though. Okay. You say, um, you know, you say one of the reasons why you're not sold on him is because he's he's a little slow with going through his reads and whatnot, which yeah. is true, which is true. And he's, and he's not – yeah, he is slow, like running. He, slow. He, yeah, but he can make plays with his feet. He could extend plays. He's mm-hmm. like a Geno Smith. He's not a running quarterback like right. Griffin or right. Kaepernick. Right, like Leftwich, yeah, like Gerard, you know, those guys. Right, 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 right. So do you think he can get better with – time and reps and chemistry and a full training camp with the, with the Colts in, in those areas when he gets more comfortable, or do you think this is how good he's going to get being that he's only, you know, when, when was he drafted? He was in, um, what, what draft class was he in? The he, Wilson think, draft? No, no. no. He, he was mm. after, he was after, um, Garoppolo's. So, so that means that he's been in the league for three years. Yes. This is his third year. I believe mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. I like that he's cheap, like a cheap option. I really do. I look at Brissett, and I think that there's – I do think that there's a nice chance. You just really have to put an unbelievable team around him if he's ever going to make a sensational push. You know, I don't know how high the guy's ceiling is. You know, I, I'd rather line up with a Baker Mayfield. I do think Mayfield grades better. I would be a lot more excited if the Colts had Baker Mayfield than, than Brissett. I, Rosen and Allen, I'm the exact same way on both of those guys. I really am. I just look at Brissett. I think that he's limited skill-wise, and I hope he can prove me wrong and just just continue to ball out. And I think he's a decent quarterback. Like, at best, he can, he can achieve that kind of, you know, top 15 status, you know? Right. I, I'm just saying, you know, being so young, I wasn't expecting this, you know, from him. And I'm not some, like, uh, you know, in the closet NC State fan or anything like that. But, um, you know, yeah. I wasn't expecting this. I'm just actually shocked. And, you know, from my kind of viewpoints, I'm totally impressed with them. But I will say this to kind of just end it because I want to ask you a question about the Giants. Yeah. Um, the, the good old Giants and, and Ben McAdoo. But um, last thing I want to say regarding the whole Colts thing is you could be right or I can be right. Either situation, you know, whatever path they go down, <clears throat> it's not necessarily the wrong one. You know, if, if they just say, hey, look, we're going to roll the dice with luck, I would be totally, you know, like, wow. You know, they still have Andrew Luck, a great, like a top 10 quarterback. Yeah. You know, it's it's not like a huge, like, decision as opposed to, you know, you got one great guy, one horrible guy. It's just, you know. I'm 50-50 now. I came into this conversation thinking luck like 75% of the, the time. Um, I'm 50, 50 now, but I'm not like sold on Brissett for the next 10 years. I'm more like, let's bring in some serious young competition. Let's really, you know, let's really make Brissett beat out a young guy. Um, and I guess maybe that's unfair to Brissett. I may, maybe I'm just, I think I'm a prisoner of just the whole third string thing. I just, I, I just haven't seen this guy. I just haven't seen any evidence yet. And it's not Brissett's fault. It, yeah, it's totally understandable because, I mean, it's only been one and half And you know what? Year. But to your point, it. here's the thing, though, that, that, that would be okay. It's like I know that the draft class next year isn't – maybe it's not awesome. We don't really know a lot of the guys next year that are coming. But um, if Brissett, if he bombs, right, then you, could, then you just start it next year, right? So I guess it, the, the punishment is more severe, actually, with hanging with Andrew Luck. Because the more likely thing in is that Andrew Luck stays around and they kind of they, – they, they struggle and win it. You know, they might win their division and Luck might play out of his mind, but then the roster still stays pretty bad. But with Brissett, we're, we're going to get a whole year next year of the guy, you know? Yeah, on paper, my idea is bad, right? Giving away a top-10 quarterback, like what the hell, like, in, like basically in his prime, on paper it's bad. But I think a lot – like just looking at like logics – saving money. Yeah. You're basically going to be acquiring draft picks. You already have a guy and I'm not sold on it for 10 years either. Like, you know, no way in hell. Like I'm not giving him like a huge deal. I'm just saying, I think this guy can start. Right. You just want the superstar and you just don't think <laughs> of Jacoby Brissett and superstar. And I know Andrew Luck means a lot to that city. It would be a very emotional decision. Um, 
I would want either Mayfield or Josh Allen. Those are the only two guys. Mayfield, Josh Allen, or Rosen are the only guys that I could see being better, being a being a better option. If you're going to go with Brissett, it, it would be a big stretch. And then uh, the interesting thing is, Ian, guess what's going to happen too logistically? Pagano's going to leave. So unfortunately for Brissett, there's these. It, it, I do feel bad for Jacoby Brissett because I think he's kind of like Bryce Petty in this sense is that he might never really get an opportunity to run a team. Like Kellen Clemens, I was the same way. I was like, let Kellen run something. You remember Kellen, man, he had the arm. I was like, let's go with Kellen. But From Kellen Oregon. never got his chance. And it could be really – I would feel bad for Jacoby Brissett if he never got an opportunity. It's just tough because you do have this all-star, you know, with Andrew Luck. You know, I look – but, but Ian, what I want to say is Pagano's gone. You get new coach coming in now. New coach wants new quarterback. So, you know what I'm saying? Very true. The last thing I'll say about and it also is – And also David uh, Shaw, he might come, you know, Jim Harbaugh. That's <laughs> bad. If those two options go, Brissett, uh, he, he isn't going to – It's a no-go, play. yeah. Um, then your plan is done if, if one of those guys take the gig. Right. And of course, you know, like I was saying, your plan is not bad. Your plan is not necessarily wrong. I just would also, think that. Also, the new coach wants Andrew Luck probably. Yeah, maybe. But he also could want a good roster and money to spend on free agents, which, you know, you can't really do that with Luck on a big deal. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you, man. I'm like 50 50 right now. It's, it's yeah, weird. right. Right. On paper, it's like, oh, this doesn't make any sense. What the, you know, what the hell? Yeah, but you know, it's a lot it, of faith in Brissett. It's a I'll, lot of faith. I'll, I'll tell you what, though, this the re- the ha- the rest or the second half of this year, it's gonna you know play probably a big part in this decision. I might have to look at some film, man. You're making it interesting. You're making Colts games interesting, man. <laughs> People of Indianapolis should be proud. Indy, I got your back. The Naptown crowd. So uh, let's talk about the Giants, man. Team me up with some Giants questions. Let's go, Giants. Um, Obviously a huge topic right now in, in uh, national media. Um, it's been struggling this season, pretty obvious. 1-1 one, one game. Um, it, it hasn't been pretty for the Giants fans. Uh, there's been a lot of talk of the Giants looking at, uh, I guess, new possible quarterbacks, mm-hmm. such as Sam Darnold, such as Davis Webb, you know, already on the roster, maybe even a Josh Rosen. What are your thoughts on that? Should they go away from Eli or should they draft the quarterback of the future? Ian, wouldn't it be funny if they drafted Baker Mayfield? Because guess who no, Baker Mayfield? I love Baker Mayfield. <laughs> guess who Mayfield was with the first year in his college career? Davis Webb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Texas Tech, Red Raiders. Get the bad guns blood up. going again. Yeah, guns up. Um, this this one I'm very definitive on. I'm much more definitive on the Giants and the Colts because I because the Colts thing, like you pointed out how the roster was awful with Indianapolis. The Giants roster, like, even though like they lost to the Rams by 40, even though the Giants roster looks horrendous right now with the, the Seahawks drilling them, it looks like Eli Apple's not playing that well. This is a between the ears thing. And I look at the Giants, and there was a Yahoo report that came out uh, yesterday. I don't know if you read that, but two anonymous players gave a report to ESPN, actually, and they said that Ben McAdoo is literally running, like, like practices 100 miles per hour, you know, 100% practices on Saturday. He's wearing the players out. He's robotic. He doesn't understand how to discipline guys. He'll walk past people in the locker room, has no social skills. So I look at the Giants, and, and this is a talented defense. They're in win-now mode. JPP, Landon Collins, Jenkins. This is a defense last year that was one of the best in the NFL. They went to Green Bay, played a whale of a game. They held the Cowboys. It's less than – I was talking about this with somebody yesterday, Ian. It's less than 11 months since um, the Giants held the Cowboys 10-7 Against Dallas, remember at the Meadowlands on Sunday night how incredible they looked. They just beat, yep. like, the best offense in the NFL. And I look at JPP, Vernon, you have so much money invested that it's not time to just completely tear this thing apart. It's time to get a head coach, a veteran coach, an older guy, and just ride with Eli for three to four more years. I think he can pick up another ring. I think he can give it a run. What do you think, man? I'm I'm fine with disagreements on this topic because I actually been talking to Giants fans 
and a lot are not with me on this one. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I'm a Jet fan, so uh, <clears throat> naturally I don't really like the Giants. But uh, And you know the roster, of course, better than I do. And you know, I guess, being from the Northeast, you kind of know the fan base a little bit more, <clears throat> you know, on, on what they're thinking. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I really, really want the Giants to stick with Eli because it'll give the Jets more of a chance to go with or grab a Rosen, mm-hmm. you know, because I will – I'll be forced to not like Josh Rosen anymore if he goes to the New York Giants. I, will, I won't like that at all. Um, yeah. So I, I'm really hoping that they stick with Eli. And I do think Eli at least has two seasons of starting capabilities. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't think he's like, you know, I, don't, I just don't view him as like just some horrible, like, veteran backup quarterback somewhere. Like, I don't, I don't view him as like that. Where, if whereas, you're the Giants and you have a top three pick, you're a Giants fan, what do you want? really tough question I think the smart thing I think thinking with your head the smart decision would be to go with Josh Rosen or some maybe even a Darnold because I don't think Rosen would survive behind this Giants O-line to be honest with you I think Darnold moves around you know he does a really good job in the pocket bigger more durable um I actually sent we were talking before and I sent you the report that the Giants were interested in Darnold but um yeah you know I I think that's like the smarter move to go with Sam Okay. Being that being that you're that high, but I think more. I I just feel like if you're the New York Giants right now and you don't take an offensive lineman or you don't take a running back, the fan base will go absolutely nuts because you're drafting a quarterback that won't contribute now. Where you have all this money invested in the defense now, yeah. you have a quarterback that needs to win now. You have Odell Beckham and these guys that you know are right at their tail end of you know the rookie deals and whatnot, so they're going to get paid. You kind of you you know are you going to win with them now or are you going to wait three years when Josh Rosen or Donald or, or whoever is going to play? So I think if I was in charge of the you know if I was running the Giants, <clears throat> I think I would look for either an offensive lineman like Lynchney, or I would go with Barkley. Because um, the thing is with the offensive, the thing is with the offensive line, right? As far as the, with, you know with the Giants, mm-hmm. is that it's like you have money invested in Jenkins with snacks, with Vernon, you know, you have these guys, you have, you, I mean, I would assume that your guys are going to pay Beckham and Landon at some point. Yeah. So you, so you for sure. So you, ha- you have to have this money. Like it's not like basketball or baseball where there's just like, there's no cap limit. Mm-hmm. And especially with this free agent class, there's not that many good uh, offensive linemen. So like, if you don't have the money to spend for offensive linemen, there's probably not going to be that many good ones anyway. Your, your only viable option is to look through the draft, you know, where you can get a top of the line one. It's almost like a biting the bullet kind of situation, like sucks now, but it'll pay off later. What are your thoughts on that? Because like, yes. I know that might sound confusing. You said that you would take Sam Darnold though. I think that's what the smarter decision would be, but the I think, decision. but the short term, it would be go O-line that's or right. running back. If they pick Sam Darnold. I'd say a good 70% of the fan base would be behind the decision of the giants, the giants fan base. When you test their fan base, they are rattled right now. They are really angry. They, they just want a full rebuild. They just want to scrap this thing completely over. And if they get a new coach and Sam Darnold, they're going to celebrate like it's like the new birth of some incredible child, you know? So, but to me, honestly, man, as much as I like Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold's like the nicest kid by all accounts. He just seems like a great guy. I think that that would be the biggest disaster. The thing I, 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 I least want to happen. It's just like when they sign McAdoo. Because Sam Darnold, I hate the throwing motion of Darnold. Um, he plays in the West Coast. He's really <laughs> finicky in the pocket. He, he's out of control and reckless. He doesn't have that strong of an arm. He makes plays late. He's clutch. He's a good college player. I think he's not going to pan out in the NFL at all. I look at Josh Allen would be like the only guy I'd look at because of the cold weather factor because Josh Allen's from a small town because he is the hardest worker in the draft. But, you know, if I were the Giants, Ian, listen to this plan. You want to hear the plan that I have for him if I was controlling the team? Let's hear it. It's, it's number so, – so you have the number three pick 
Darius Geis is going to be a running back that I'm higher on Barkley. He's faster than Saquon. He's going to make more plays happen. He plays in a tougher conference where he doesn't have a Trace McSorley. He has no tight end. He has a couple of wide receivers, but it's Danny Etling. And who was it? Cam Cameron and now a new coordinator. He's had like a new coordinator all the time. There's no creative play calls. He's played behind Leonard for a little bit of his time. So he's going to be a better pro than I think Saquon will be. Mark that down. The next thing I wanted to say is so you have so you have Darius Geis, then you have a player that's a very tradable piece, and that's Odell Beckham. And Odell Beckham is Mr. Miami Boat Trip. He's Mr. <laughs> I'm going to take this receiving court out partying, and the playoffs – um, you know, they're not a huge priority. Odell's doing commercials. You know, I just, it, it, it's just the Odell Beckham personality is not one that I want to build around the New York Giants. I want tougher players. So if you trade Beckham, you could get a lineman. If you trade him to Cleveland, you can get Joe Thomas. So there's your offensive lineman. You'll also get draft picks by trading Odell Beckham, which I think in the long run is smart. Look at the LA Rams, right? I know they have Sammy Watkins. You know, but the best teams in the NFL, they don't have the best wide receivers. The, the Eagles, the Alshon Jeffrey isn't doing very much <coughs> this year. You can get away with Evan Ingram, Sterling Shepard, and then guess what, Ian? You're going to draft a second. If you trade Beckham, you get to draft a wide receiver. You know, you can or, draft a really good wide receiver there. Or kind of, uh, you know, who we brought up before, Terrell Pryor. Or, you know, maybe a guy in free agency, you know, just a, just a guy that you can get for, you know, he's not going to have the insane touchdown numbers and, and the catches and whatnot, but for a lot cheaper of a price, you can get, you know, a little bit less production. Sure, there's so many receivers out there that can just you can put into a system. Like even in Miami, there's like three guys that I think are talented guys, you know, that just like don't get utilized the correct way. Um, you know, like even Crowder might be a free agent. Garcon's even helping out in some ways. That's what I would do. I would not keep Odell Beckham around, man. I don't know about you. I know Odell's a really talented guy, but his the offense didn't function well with Odell Beckham. You just need to get tougher. You need to start running the ball. You can't be this aerial raid type of team with Beckham. And that's kind of where I stand on the whole matter. <laughs> right. I'm not the biggest fan of Odell Beckham um, at all. I don't like really how – I just feel like he's just such a head case in the locker room and he splits the locker room. You know, I just feel like, you know, the, the, there are these players out there that they just care more about the red carpet than the – you know, in between the lines, I, you know, I'm not doubting his talent or his passion for the game and whatnot. I'm just saying, if you're the Giants, you can sell him hot. Like you can trade him away, like, stop, you know, while your stock's high, get a boatload of money for him. You know, you're getting rid of a ton of production, but at the same time, you know, you're saving money and you're getting back, you know, picks and you're also getting rid of a locker room distraction. I mean, uh, you know, I saw it this year with Brandon Marshall. Uh, ironically, he went to you guys. But, um, you know, last season, I mean, he wasn't even trying with the New York Jets. Like, I remember, you know, other players would score and he would just walk away. He wouldn't even bother congratulating them. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people were like, oh, Brandon Marshall, they killed the Jets for, for getting rid of Marshall. You know, oh, he's easily the best receiver, you know, we have in this and that. But when we got rid of him, all of a sudden, Robbie Anderson emerges um, we, we go ahead and we trade uh, Sheldon Richardson for Curse, who was another locker room distraction. So yes. you, can, you can get what productive wide receivers. I mean, Robbie Anderson was undrafted. Uh, you look down the list. Uh, Quincy Nunwell was, I think, a sixth-round pick or a fifth-round pick out of Nebraska. Um, Curse, I don't, I, he was, I think, a later-round guy too. So you can find wide receivers like anywhere. We, I mean, it, you, you don't let's necessarily – Let's list around the NFL like um, – well, I know Pryor, but like Victor Cruz is one of the best receivers in our history, and he is undrafted out of UMass. He's a slot guy that just works. Wes Welker, Edelman, you know. Yeah, you could go down the list on how many productive – I mean, basically every receiver that uh, Drew Brees has worked with in New Orleans Saints, um, Brees has basically made every wide – like, they, they've never been, had, like, that top ten wide receiver. Austin Cowley, just guys, like, coming yeah. – yeah, or, like, the Peyton Manning tree of, like, Stokely and – well, Ted Ginn, who, who else you got? Like, well, even Cam's doing that with, like, Funchess and, like, Philly Brown he would do that with. 
Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it, and, and the Giants it, are going to have to sign Beckham for a lot of money, too. That's yeah. going to keep you up. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It doesn't help that Beckham wants to be the highest paid player either. Get if I was in charge of the Giants, I'm trading him now. I'm getting rid of him. Um, mm-hmm. you, like I said, you there don't have the, you don't have the, you don't have the distraction. You don't have the the issue like the headache of oh we have to invest twenty five million dollars to this guy per year. Let's mm-hmm. trade him away. Get back something in return for him as opposed to just letting him walk and getting nothing. Correct. Um, I, it, that it's just like these big bold moves like they don't i just feel like the media like kills teams and they kill like like whenever like a huge superstar gets traded like the the team that that gives them away gets destroyed by the media like like a mat like yeah like Watkins a little bit like every everybody says in buffalo you know everybody was you know destroying buffalo saying how could you make this move um you know i, I think Watkins is a good receiver but you know look at what they got back in return a second round pick, very nice, and a starting corner, very nice. So everybody you know, flips out. Told they totally flip out. Like like, and this year, you know, like everybody's saying how like Tampa was going to be great because like Jackson goes there. Like they're they're enamored with names in the off season, and then we get enamored with the wide receiver names. I think it's because we play fantasy football so much, and like receivers are so prominent. Most dudes just know the wide receivers, you know, that you're hanging out with. And, and then, you know what happens, Ian, that's a little frustrating? is like the Jets, right, they trade away, like they get rid of Marshall and Richardson, and the GM gets killed. And then you look at this season with Marshall and the Giants or whatnot, and you're ne- those people are just going to be silent. Like they're, ne- you're never gonna, they're never going to get consequences for saying that sort of thing and being wrong. It'll just kind of get passed, and then we'll just make the same crazy comments next year. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's kind of ironic because we were just talking about Andrew Luck being traded, and could you imagine like that? Just the f- like how many people would just absolutely rip Indianapolis if the, if they dealt Andrew Luck, mm-hmm. or like the same situation? Um, it's kind of going down in Pittsburgh with Le'Veon Bell. You know, Bell might be dealt if he doesn't sign like a long term deal. Mm-hmm. You know, and and if he doesn't get franchised, of course. Yeah. Um, but um. It's going to be you know, crazy, man. Yeah, hey, I, I, let, let's do a little bit of rapid fire here. I'm going to list four names, and then I actually want to talk about you guys, the Jets. I want to talk about the jets Bucks game this weekend a little bit, a little college football. But four names for the New York Giants that I can honestly see them hiring. Um, I look at – I'm just going to list these four names. I'm even going to throw a wild card in there that's just a funny one. But here's the four, okay? So, I, so John Harbaugh, David Shaw, Scott Linehan, and then – Wait, you you said John Harbaugh, the the Ravens coach? The Ravens coach. You think he's going to get canned? I do. Wow, interesting take. I thought you meant Jim, but you said John by mistake. I mean, Jim, I would like Jim even more than John. Huh, real interesting take. Yo, if if Harbaugh gets fired from Baltimore, I think that's probably going to be the best or the hottest coach on the market, you know, like top guy. Yeah. So, So sorry to cut you off. You have LaFleur, you have David Shaw. (laughs) And then I know this is one of my favorite dudes, but Scott Frost, but he's probably not coming. He's too college-y. Scotty so Frost. Fun, though. I'd love that guy because he'd be like McVay, but, you know, where well, I don't know. Where I lean is like um, maybe Shaw or Harbaugh is probably at the top of my list. But what do you think about the names? And then you want to hear another name that people are throwing out is Jim Bob Cooter. So those are just some guys, you know, to think about. I think the best fit for the Giants would be Shaw. I think – I mean, because Bob Cooter, he runs like this. He has a similar style of McAdoo, like shotgun and throwing the ball 40 times. Completely the agree. Stafford can do it, and the Giants have the weapon. You know, Marvin Jones and Golden Tate and Ebron right. and these guys. No running game at all in the dome. Right. Uh, I think David Shaw is the most logical answer. I think it makes the most sense. You know, he might he, – I think he, he comes to the NFL. I mean, I know he was already here, or he, were, he was already in the NFL at one point, not as a head coach, but – um, I think he just comes into the NFL and I think he fits that, like that, that just that blue call or like just how the giants play the game of football historically, not like recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he would establish a run game. Maybe you can look at Bryce love in the second round, who knows? Um, but you know, yes. overall, I, I, th- I think Shaw would give a nice, uh, I, not only an identity, but also a, um, just a sense of calmness and, Okay, we're back to Giants football. 
I completely agree. The guy just is so smart. He just is, he, he's so classy. He would just, he would just kill it. He just dominates. It's totally a giant's fit. Like you were saying, it's totally a giant's guy. And, you know, you get along with owners, you know, it's definitely a guy that has authority and, you know, he's played, he's coached at Stanford. Yeah. And I guess just another quick thing that I guess add on to that is that he is coming from co- he or he would be com- coming from college. So he's worked with kids, you know, for a, for a really long time. So he, he knows how to appeal to the younger, like the millennials or the younger generation. So sure. I know McAdoo has had a hard time with that. Yeah. I mean, he's dealing with really smart kids, you know, um, at Stanford, but absolutely, absolutely. All right. So I want to talk a little, uh, you know, just, we're going to do some rapid fire here. I look at you guys in the Jets. I look at this week in Tampa Bay. It's old Fitzpatrick. It's quite a matchup, you know, Fitzy versus McCown. You know, the two old guys, you know, duking it out. I think it's I think it's a must win game for the Jets. I also look at this AFC now and it's crazy. Like when you're looking at teams like the Bills and the Oakland Raiders in positions to make the wild card, the thing is wide open. Your defense is playing at a high level. I don't think it's inconceivable that you guys are in the mix for actually a wild card this year. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's so crazy thinking about it. And um <clears throat> I gotta say I'm loving it. I'm loving how the AFC is like panning out, how it's just total mayhem the good teams are bad the bad teams are good other than like Cleveland in the AFC um I just find it crazy you know look at all the teams that were supposed to be playoff teams or Super Bowl contenders uh Baltimore not that good Oakland not that good San Diego Denver Mm. Miami Mm. uh, Tennessee even I mean I know Tennessee's doing their thing right now but Cincinnati Cincinnati, yeah. I actually pick Cincinnati to go to the playoffs. They still can, but I don't think they will. But long story short is the Kansas Jets – City, there's – I mean, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, you're right. You you pretty much – I mean, let's just call it like, you know, like how, how it is. We there's, there's basically three dominant teams in the AFC. Chiefs, Steelers, Patriots. Everyone else is kind of second tier um, as far as, you know, the Jaguars, you know, the Bills, teams like that. So – you know, overall, I love, I like, I really like how this AFC is panning out because it makes the Jets. There's more of a chance that you know we can make the playoffs. Houston Texans are dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, with Deshaun yeah. going down and whatnot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't think Indy or Cleveland even has a chance anymore. Um, so, you know, as of right now, I like where the Jets are. It just, I gotta say though, and you know, I might sound like a pessimistic fan right now, but it's like every time I see the Jets like in that in the hunt or like in the standings. I just – all I do is I think back to the Miami Dolphin game when we're up by 14 in the fourth quarter. We can't hold on. Um, you know, obviously that, that – the, the blown call in New England, I'm like, damn, that, that could have been a win. Falcons. And the Falcons, right. The, the, last, the last game I was going to bring up, the Falcons, where it's like, damn it, we, we should have had at least two of the, two of the three games. Uh, it, it just leaves a real bad taste in your mouth because if we were to even even one of those wins, if we were just to have that one win against the Dolphins, we would be sitting at like right, I think, knocking on the door of the wild card. But now we're at at like ten, the tenth seed, whereas mm-hmm. the sixth or the seventh seed with a with a you know being a divisional win, you know, so that I know that pays dividends down the line. Mm-hmm. I like where the Jets are going. I'm not completely satisfied, but we we've over exceeded you know um, expectations. I think Todd Bowles deserves to be back for another season, which, you know, it takes a lot for me to say that because, you know, in the beginning of the year, I wasn't on board. Mm -hmm. Now I am. I think he's done a lot with not that much talent, you know, considering that the offensive line is poor. We don't really have that much of a, like a stud running back. Um, We don't have the answer at quarterback and we got a whole bunch of guys under 24 and 25 on defense. You know, I'm really impressed with this team right now. I just think we have to keep going in the right direction as far as drafting, players we got to get a quarterback uh, lately I've been looking at Baker Mayfield because <clears throat> I'm, I'm thinking his attitude is, is like perfect for the Jets and we're not going to finish the third pick or the fourth pick you know like like the Browns and stuff so it, you know if the Jets finish like in pick 18 go ahead here's a concern like I still don't think Bowles is safe I still haven't seen enough from him I don't like his style of leadership, and I, th- you have to admit though, if there if there's some really bad loss, it's like Todd Bowles should be right back on the hot seat. I agree. I mean, we do have a, t- a bunch of tough games later on the season. Got the Pats, got the Chiefs, 
got the Panthers, you know. He's functioning um, right now, but I don't think he's a superstar coach. Right, but, um, I, you know, I'm just looking at – you know, I'm not necessarily saying Bowles is the answer. <clears throat> All I'm saying is I think he deserves at least another shot with a – with more talent, if, sure. if that makes any sense. Sure. I think last year was like almost an anomaly because you look at all these players that are labeled as great players by the media with Decker, Marshall, Revis, Clady, Calvin, Pro- you know, all these different guys that we let go, all these like name, like household names, mm-hmm. they go and we get better and all these players get, get worse. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think, I think the media really just dug at, at yeah, Mike McCann. It was a 10 and six year. Yeah. Too but many the, personalities. It wasn't Todd Bowles' team. Got to give him some credit. That win versus Buffalo was impressive. There's been some games they've hung in there. Totally agree. It's not a coach that it's it, – it's not a team that's quitting. You look at the program right now, it's trending a little bit up. Where Ben McAdoo is like that, you know, where, where Pagano is just about to like, get, yeah. you know, so – um and Anthony Lynn too. There's some coaches too, Ian, where you look at them, and you just you just wonder if they can even control the team or even get them motivated on the same page. And um, and Vance Joseph right now is is really is really struggling. So um, yeah, that that's uh, Vance Joseph. That's a totally interesting case. That's uh, that's something I kind of I've known from the get go. I was never sold on Vance Joseph for, even when Miami like. Yeah, I like that. him. He's a really good guy. <laughs> He's a really nice guy. I just, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about him. Let's do uh, two more minutes left. Let's do some college football picks, Ian. You want to yeah. tee it up? Let's just hit the big games. Um, let's go to the SEC right now. I'm going to do two games. we got Auburn, UGA, and Mississippi State, Bama. What do you think about these two games? I think, well, I, I'm going to go with uh, two more games after these two I got to ask you about. So, sure. first two, um, I think in regards to the Georgia game, I think Georgia – they can't sleep on Auburn. I think Auburn has a lot of talent. And I think I think um, the head coach over at Auburn, uh, name's not coming to me right now. Malzahn? But, uh, Malzahn, the old high school guy. Right. Good old Gus. I, I think um, – Gus Bus, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I think, I think he could be on the hot seat right now because Auburn has tons of talent. Yeah. Um, I, I think if they, I think if he loses to Georgia, I think that seat gets a ton hard, ton hotter. Um, but you know, it, it's it's just weird looking at that because if they beat Georgia, they jump up. Um, as far as Alabama, I think um, I think Alabama is in. I, I think they're going to sleep on Mississippi State a little bit. I think the Bulldogs have a lot of talent. They're going to be at home. Uh, I think it could be close, but I see the Crimson Tide pulling away. Two games I wanted to ask you about. Sure. Or here, give me your takes on those two. First. Oh yeah, I like UGA. <laughs> I like I love Kirby Smart. He's like the you know you know what Kirby Smart is like. He's like the Nick Saban of the East right now. What he's doing with Georgia, it's a team like I thought UGA would even like like look at the Florida game like they just blow everybody out. They're just so awesome. They don't sleep on anybody. They're a team that even went to Notre Dame and won. They just keep like, they keep really defying your expectations. They keep, you know, pushing it to another level where you never think it would go. And I look at this game and it's going to be an incredibly interesting game. Gus Malzahn, I don't think he's beaten UGA or Alabama in three years. And the one year he had the the magic season was with Trey Mason, great running back. You had the, um, the prayer at Jordan Hare where the Georgia guys collided into each other. And then you had the kick six game, which just two of the most incredible outcomes ever. They beat Missouri and then versus Florida State, they can't guard Jameis on a two-minute drill with Nick Marshall. Nick Marshall fit his offense to a T. Now teams have caught up with the Gus Malzahn offense. I look at Stidham, man. That second half versus LSU was awful that Auburn played. They had that game. Yeah. The Clemson game, Stidham didn't play well at all either. I look at A&M, and I look at the Arkansas wins, and yeah, they're okay, especially the, the, the A&M game was, uh, was a pretty good win. Carrion Johnson's a good player. It's just U, U, UGA is going to win this game going away. And then I look at, um, at, at Alabama and Mississippi State. That's real interesting. Mississippi State's going to cover – I'll I'll have some fun and go with the with the Bulldogs. I'll have some fun. You're wearing the Bulldogs shirt right now. Exactly. I, I kinda I kinda exactly. I thought yeah, I thought you were gonna go with them. Hail. Hail State. 
All right, I'll give you my uh, – want me to give you my picks now for the other games? Hold on. Let me – yeah, let me ask you um, two more games I want to get your thoughts on. Yeah. Number so one, <laughs> TCU, Oklahoma, the biggest game, I think, of the week. Um, I, I'm probably going to be watching every snap of that game. Saturday at 8, TCU at Oklahoma, going to be a big matchup. Who you got? Yeah. Lower it, lower it. Um, <laughs> uh, interesting commentary, you know, uh, you know, I got my dad here trying to watch some TV. Um, I, man, oh man, I like Baker Mayfield. You know, I'm a huge Sooner, like Baker Mayfield fan. You just kind of resonate with guys in college. It's his last year seeing him make the playoff would be fantastic. This is such a tough game because guess what? Heart of hearts at TCU. I just think like TCU has an unbelievable chance of it. I would never, I would never ever bet this game ever because um, I think TCU has a wonderful chance. Their defense, they already went to the Sooner State and won. I'm gonna go with TCU in an upset. I go, I'm going TCU too. I love Baker. I love the Sooners. You don't want to see it happen, but it it's gonna <coughs> happen. No, I'm gonna be rooting for Baker. For Baker and uh, you know the Sooners as a whole, um, but you know, looking at this Oklahoma or looking at this TCU defense, I, I just see the Horn Frogs coming out on top. So the second game I want to ask you about is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish going up against the, I believe, ranked eighth Miami Hurricanes. Who you got? So in terms of confidence, the one game I'm really confident in is UGA. That's like the only one on this board that I'm even co- – I'm not even confident in Alabama because Nick Saban rarely goes undefeated, right? And I know Mississippi State's missing a lot of wide receivers. But UGA's beating Auburn. That, that's the most confident one. All these other ones are almost toss-ups to me. Um, Notre Dame's a more talented team. The Miami game last week was tremendous. I mean, they really shocked me. They're, I thought Miami was an overrated team that's just skating by. I'm going Notre Dame, though, man. They're, 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 they're playing awesome football. They've been consistent all year long. The game is in Miami. If it was on a neutral field, the game would not be close at all. Notre Dame would drill them. It's in Miami. That's the only reason it gives me pause. But what do you think? I got the Irish one in this game. I got the same exact response as you. You know, I think fighting Irish, their, their offense is explosive. <clears throat> I think Miami's going to have a tough time defending that I think it's, I think Miami is going to come out to an early like they're going to like jump start and get like a quick 7-0 lead or 10-0 lead or something but I think overall I think Notre Dame is going to outlast them and the fighting Irish are going to walk away victorious a lot of stuff to cover was a ton of fun it was a ton of fun JC great mecca podcast guys we got tremendous guests we're trying to line up for next week keep subscribing to the show I opened I even opened up the Patreon channel you can check the link out and um again like uh again like any donations really nice for the channel and for technology and things and uh jc man was a blast thanks man had a great time doing it no doubt see ya